today we're doing a tutorial on my oldest design, which is the basic swirl. So let's head over to the drawing board and we're first going to attack the edge to edge version. Before we go directly into what to do with the basic swirl, what I want to go into is what we don't want to do. One of the things I don't want us to do is to use the six shape. What I actually want to use instead of this six with the outer back that rounds around is a question mark shape that comes out straight and then swoops down. So you think of a top of a ski slope that comes down and around into your swirl. The old school swirls that we used to do years and years ago were the six shapes. And the problem that I had with these when we did these is you always ended up as you did them with all of this open space that wasn't consistently filled. So again, we want to go with the hook shape, which is the top of a ski slope that comes down into the hook, not a six. Now we have the hook shape out of the way. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to practice the motif in every single direction, i.e. the four directions, north, south, east, and west. You always want to do that before you take it into an edge to edge, so that, that way when you get to the edge to edge, not all your swirls and hooks are going to be facing the same way. So the very first one you're going to practice, and you might practice a page or two, is swirl up, starting from the left side, we came down, we swirled up, into the eye. Let's talk about the hook for just a second here. When I come in here, I consider this the eye of the hook. I then consider this the back of the head of the hook. This would be the top of the head of the hook. This would be the tail of the hook. So we've got our swirl and hook into the eye. On the inside of the hook, we're just going to echo the inside and up the tail towards the back of the tail, which is where we came from, back here. And then you're going to echo that. So you're going to come down and then start around. Think of a seagull, a cartoon seagull on your way around. So this shape right here, this is where we started, is exactly what you're going to do. And you're going to repeat many rows. So you would do a lot of rows of swirl, echo, come down, start around. And you just complete this until it builds in your muscle memory, probably about two or three rows. Once you get that down on paper, you're then going to come from the right side. You're going to flip it. So you're going to start at the right, and it's the same shape. You go into your hook shape, echo up the tail, echo the tail, and then start around. And that's where you stop. Don't connect these as you practice them on paper. Right now you're just getting a feel of the hook and the echo, the motif itself. This is the motif. And the rest of the design is going to be all echoing. So this is number one. This is number two. And now we'll do the other directions that you're going to practice on paper. So now our third direction would be we start on the left again. And when we come up, we actually come up. So the belly of the hook that goes down. So the scoop is down on the next two. Start from the left side, come over into that question mark shape that swirls down. Now you're going to echo the inside and the tail, and then second echo and third echo, and stop. And you're going to practice a few rows of these. And then you're going to move to the last direction you're going to practice, and that's going to be starting from the right, and you're going to come over. But again, remember, You've got your question mark shape on its belly with the hook facing down. So if water filled this hook shape, it'd go on the inside rather than how we did it earlier. We're going to echo back up the tail, echo once, echo twice. So that's all four directions. And fill up a few pages. Um, fill up half a page just practicing this over and over and over and over until it feels comfortable. And then this, and then the other two directions. And when that feels comfortable, we move to the next step. Now let's take those four shapes and see how this travels as an edge to edge. Now normally when I work with an edge to edge, I usually start in the upper left hand corner of my quilt or paper, if I'm practicing on paper. I start with my first hook shape. I echo up the tail, echo down the spike, and then around, and I just continuing echoing until I hit another swirl shape. I echo back up the tail on that hook, and now as I echo, I echo that into the previous hooked echo. And I just continue around this whole shape. 
And as I work, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to fill in this space. When I work with edge to edge um, type designs, what I like to do is to keep from moving in rows. I will tend to work on the diagonal. So I'll fill out and then I'll work my way around and then I'll move across with diagonals. That way when you remove the quilt from the frame, you can't see the rows. They're not obvious. So I'm going to come down, echo, another swirl, and they don't all have to be the same size. And I'm going to echo that into what I already have. And whenever you want, you break away with another hook shape. Now, here's the key. The hook always lays against the echo that you have. And notice how much echoing I have. I actually have more echoing in this design than I actually have swirls and hooks. So now I'm going to lay that in and swirl away from my existing design. You always know you're doing it right if you do that. You never want to do your hook shape towards the design because then you're trapped. So now I'm going to echo down the tail and now I'm going to echo this into what's already there and fill up pages and pages, however many pages it takes. This is why we sit in front of the TV and quilt on paper, because we won't take the time to do this on machines, which is why typically we end up doing the same designs we've always done. And now we're going to take this over to the machine to see how it quilts out. Okay, so now we are at the fabric and we're going to start our basic swirl edge to edge. So, down here, we have locked the edge of our fabric. I have locked my stitches. I'm in the upper left-hand corner, which is where I would start with an edge to edge. And what I'm gonna do is just like on the paper, I'm gonna come down with my first hook shape, backtrack up, and continue on and repeat that same process that we did on the paper. Swirl. We're gonna echo up the tail. Spike echo, echo around. I'm going to continue echoing until I feel like I want to throw in another hook. I'm going to echo up the tail. I always echo up the tail and that's going to close in all of that space. Now I'm going to echo those because it's just like you're adding grapes to the bunch. Then you just keep echoing it all together and it will make it very cohesive and it's going to flow. Swirl. Echo up the tail. I'm going to go right into that spot. I'm just going to fill that in so I don't have to come back there. Echo, echo, echo that. And I'm going to echo that into the previous. And normally when I come off to do a hook shape, I'm going to come out of a cleavage. I always swirl away from my previous work. So you swirl out into space and then you can fill in. Otherwise, if you hook towards your work, you're going to be trapped. I'm going to continue on. Hook. Echo. Fill in that tight space. And we're going to do this all the way across the throat space of our machine. Swirl, echo up the tail, echo the tail, echo the swirl, and then echo that into what I already have there.
today we are going to take that basic swirl and we're going to turn it into some sash and border designs. So let's head over to the drawing board to work on that. So let's start with the basic. Okay, here is our sash or border. I'm going to start with my hook shape that hooks up. And again, remember, this is the eye. This is the back of the head. When I come out of here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to echo around the outside and under the back of the head and just start to go up. And then I'm going to come out of there, which will automatically flip that hook down. So we're going to end up flipping this up, down, up, down, all the way across the space. So we've got our hook shape up, echo the outside. Remember to come all the way under to come out and go down. Echo around to the back of the head and then come out and flip up. Now, we want to remember the echo is all the way around to the back of the head of the hook on the outside. If you don't do that, what will happen is all of your hooks will flip up and you'll end up just making waves. So again, we're up now. I'm going to echo around to the back of the head swirl down, echo around to the back of the head, swirl up, echo around to the back of the head, swirl down, echo around to the back of the head, swirl up, all the way across your paper as you practice. Now what I would do is I would um, go to the uh, website and then I would just download the little PDF that has these handouts for the basic swirl, the edge to edge, and these, and trace over row by row, trace over the same row, copy it off on your printer, and trace over it. By about the third time, you're going to get that rhythm of swirl up, echo around, swirl down, swirl up, swirl down. And you want to make sure to get that rhythm. The rhythm is the most important thing. Now let's take this, and what if we have a bigger space to fill? If we have a bigger space to fill, then what you're going to do is you're going to swirl up and keep your swirl ups in the upper half of the shape you're doing. And when you come around, you fill with a couple spikes to fill that in. Now you swirl down, keep that on the lower half, all your swirl downs low, all your swirl ups high. And then we're going to echo around, spike, spike, swirl up, echo around, spike, spike to fill in all of that space for a wider border space. Swirl up, echo around, spike, spike, all the way down your practice paper. Now, again, you can put as many spikes as you need to fill in a bigger space. The one thing I would say is if you are in an area that is bigger than, let's say, one, two, three, four, five, let's say six or seven inches, you want to make sure to do the following. On your swirl ups, everything's going along good. We keep that up in the upper half. When you come back around to do your spike unders, really bring those spikes back, back. Then when you do your swirl down, Come around there and really take those spikes in here. Really twist them around there. Now you swirl up, echo around and under, spike, spike, spike. Because what will happen is when you bring those spikes up and into here, that's going to fill all this space so that you don't get the floppy fabric if you stopped right here. And you'd end up with a straight line. It's going to be a little bit more cohesive and it's going to look like a nicer um, border design for you. In your borders if you do that. Okay, so let's take these to the machine. Okay, now we're going to use that basic swirl in a border shape. And what I have here on our practice piece is a border sewn out. And we're going to start with the basic swirl and then we're going to get a little bit more extreme as we move our way around this portion of our border. So I've locked my stitches. And I'm going to come up and I'm going to go into a corner. Before we even start this, I want to say with the basic swirl, no matter which of the versions I'm using, fake the corners and throw in a spike if there's open space to maneuver. Don't take a lot of time to plan this. People don't know the difference between spending a lot of time to plan a corner on this particular border design or just going for it and filling it in with some more spikes. Throw my glasses on here. We're going to start with a swirl out for that basic swirl design. I keep that toward the center of the border space. I come around the back of the head with my echo and then of course my next hook shape is going to flip the opposite way. I'm going to come around back of the head 
and then I'm going to just continue right around that corner. Come around to the back of the head, swirl down, echo around to the back of the head, which makes that next hook flip up, swirl around the back of my head, swirl down. Now, let's say we were working in a border that was a little bit wider than this. So on this next one, I'll show you what I would do then. Okay, echo around the back of the head. Now, we're going to go into a wider border, so the swirl up stays on the upper half. I come around, echo, start out, and then come back and throw in another spike. My swirl down is on the lower part of the sash or border. Echo around, and I put a few extra spikes up there. How many spikes do you add? Well, as much as it takes to fill in the extra space. What I would say is be a little bit consistent on how many spikes you put in each one. And remember, with those, you want to really reach up into that empty space so that you don't get the floppy fabric um, situation happening. So I'm going to come out of there now, swirl down, boom, boom, swirl up, echo around, spike, spike, swirl down. Now this is one of those corners, so now I'm going to come around to fill in that corner with one and maybe a mini spike right up in there come out, which is going to flip me out. So again, every other swirl flips the opposite way, and you're going to work yourself within that throat space. Until you're done. Now typically, at that point, what I would do is I finish the border within that throat space. I would go and continue what was in the body portion here of my quilt. And then as I roll, then I would continue down both sides. I tend to be a, um, once I roll that thing under there, I don't want to see it again. So I'll do my borders first just to stabilize and keep the quilt as square as it can be. And then I'll fill in the body portions, whether it's custom block designs or an edge to edge or something like that. And then I roll the quilt do all my borders because frankly I could care less how many times I have to change thread um, on my way across. I, again, for me, I've been doing this for so many years that once it goes under that rail I really don't want to see it unless it's a special case like a show quilt or something where I want to stabilize it first. So that is our basic swirl design. All right, today is going to be the last part of our basic swirl series for tutorials and we're actually going to take that swirl and we're going to use some zig in and zig out shapes in that swirl to make it really pop and something special. So let's head over to the drawing board and work on that. There are exercises in surface quilting that really help um, the surface quilter with things like changing direction which actually don't come natural once you start learning because all of these designs is like learning a whole new cursive. And so we have to build certain muscles. And this is one of my favorite exercises. A straight line is simply a straight line. So now what I want us to do is I want you to make some rows with just straight line, zig up, zig down, zig up, zig down, zig up, zig down, and just continue. Zig down, zig up, zig down, and you just flip back and forth. Zig up, zig down, back and forth. So what you're building is sprockets. Um, now a lot of people have taken this exercise of mine and turned it into different things like, uh, they call it razor wire. I'm gonna show you how to use it in that basic swirl that we used. Um, so now I want us to remember, a straight line is simply a straight line. This is simply a straight line that has a zig up, go over, zig down, zig up, all the way. When that feels comfortable and only when that starts to feel comfortable, and when I say feels comfortable, it means that you're not doing buzzsaw. Zig ups, zig ups, zig ups. You actually remember to alternate it between zig up, zig down, zig up, zig down, zig up, zig down. At that point, now we move on to the next step. So the next step, 
we're going to take that straight line and spiral it. So we're going to start at the very center and we're going to create some spirals. So you're just going to start that straight line and it's going to spiral and circle around itself. Remember, we start at the center for this exercise. So just do that. The echoing is going to come. The best way to do really good echoing is to stop trying. You, your eye will automatically properly distance your echoing if you just start to relax. So just practice that. And what I want you to notice as you practice that is how when you spiral, it's always on a curve. You're always curving. Curve, curve, curve. So that straight line that we did earlier is a straight line. It's exactly this. Now it just curves around itself. It's constantly curving, which is creating that wonderful spiral. That's going to help you on that next step. So now our next step is we're going to go back to that spiral shape and we're going to start with our spiral around. And as we start around now, we go zig in, zig out, curve, zig in, curve, zig out. So you again are going back to that straight line, but it's on a curve. It's spiraling around itself. This is one of the best exercises for surface quilters because number one, it works on switching directions quickly. It also teaches you about curvature, about echoing. Your echoing is going to become wonderful just after five minutes of practicing this on paper. Okay, so now let's do a little troubleshooting because this is what a few of you are going to get when you try this. You're going to start around and then you're going to start doing your zigs and you're going to get these jagged edges and you might start getting some buzz saws. All that's happening is that you're not talking to yourself. Zig in, zig out. You're only zigging out. You're not zigging in. And that's what's happened here. Also notice we have straight lines. Nothing's curving here. And this is one of the biggest things I see when people start doing this exercise. And that's why a lot of times we see real inconsistent quilting is where you should be curving, you're moving in a straight line because it feels more natural. So let's correct it. And as we go, remember, it's a curve zig in, curve zig out, curve zig in, curve zig out, curve zig in, curve zig out, curve zig in to get something smooth like this. So again, this is going to take you a few pages. This is something you do want to work with if you want to get more proficient quickly. Now we're going to take that zig in and zig out movement and we're going to add it to that basic swirl that we learned a few weeks ago. So I'm going to start with my hook shape. I'm going to echo up the tail and then at any point I can start adding zig in, zig out. And then we want to echo that in and as you work your way around, zig in, zig out, zig in, zig out, zig in, come out go into the next swirl, zig in, zig out, zig in, zig out. This shape you can add to just about anything, whether it be the swirls as we're doing now, or if you wanted to, if you were doing some feather fronds, we could do a feather frond, zig in, zig out, zig in, zig out, Go back into your swirls and again as I go around these long curves that's when I'll go ahead and add my zig out, zig in, continue echoing that. And during an echo if you want to add just a little bit of movement it's a great thing to just throw in. Zig in, zig out. And you're going to fill in your whole area and work your way through. Zig out, zig in, and obviously you're going to get a different look the more zig in and zig outs that you do. Also, on the outside, if you tend to go into your hook shape and then come around the outside with your zig in, zig out, zig in, zig out, it's going to give you more of a razor wire appearance. So now let's take this over to the machine. We'll add this to the basic swirl and see what we have with that. Okay, so now we're going to take our basic swirl and we're actually going to add our zig in and zig out and turn that into a more spiky edge to edge. So just like before, we're going to start with our hook shape. Come back up, zig out, zig in. Zig out, 
basic in. Go back into our echo, just like if we were doing our basic. And whenever you want, you start throwing in the zig out or the zig in. And even as you echo around your previous work, you continue to do that. Now, we'll take our swirl, zig in, zig out, zig in, zig out. Come around, zig in, zig out, zig in, zig out. This is a great design for little boys quilts. Looks very spiky. Kind of reminds me of the wheels on some of the toy cars. Some of the Asian influence designs, it looks fantastic. And again, as you play with this, Play with adding less or more of the zig ins and zig outs. But you're simply still following that basic swirl, echo the tail. So let's go into a swirl. We're gonna echo up the tail. I might throw in a zig out, zig in. I'm gonna echo that spike. And then we're gonna start around the back side. Now there I got buzz sauce because I did two zig outs instead of a zig out and a zig in. It's gonna happen. Remember, the human eye is made so that the optic nerve will self-correct most of the things that it sees. And when I say things, I mean the inconsistencies. That's why so often we go through that period of time before our client arrives and we're nervous and oh my gosh, is it gonna be okay? And then the client arrives and it looks fantastic to them. They don't see all the little things that we see. Zig in, go up. And those are a couple examples of how we utilize that basic swirl and then make it a little bit more fancy and move into the more spiky type of swirl.